Are you looking for an easy way to send out a form, maybe for a survey or for a quiz for your students? I'm Chanel Greco from Separis, and in this video, I'll show you how you can create a Google Form. I want to start off by showing you the end product of a Google Form. So here we have a customer survey. Um, I see the logo. What was your first impression of Separis? Very professional, obviously. Uh, what would you like, or what do you like about Separis? So, okay, multiple choice. And now the answer below will decide on what you will see next. Okay, so uh, have you ever visited subparis.io? I can either say yes or no. Um, let me go ahead and say no and click on next. Okay, I'm brought to the next session. What's the reason you haven't visited? Just because, so I have some text that I can type in here. Then um, I have to choose uh, how bad you feel. I feel terrible, so... Um, uh, selection of or uh, I can choose uh, vote for I feel terrible or it doesn't bother me at all and then look what you're missing out so this is an image and uh, let me click on next there you go then okay so I have an embedded YouTube video any last words uh, great form and submit Okay, so that was the form of the way it was presented for the person who's supposed to fill it out. What about the back end? Or why don't we start with first things first? How do we create such a form? So let's say um, I have this folder here, research, and here's where I want to store this form. Well, very easy. I simply right click and say Google Forms. And by the way, um, like with almost every type of document, Google also provides us with templates, but I'm just gonna choose a blank form. And I'm gonna give it the incredible, interesting name of demo, enter. And if I go back now to Google Drive, it should pop up here in my drive. It should, there you go, demo. Okay, so it's really easy to start your own form. Now I'm going to use the customer survey form to show you how I've put this together. By the way, you see here, I already received one response. Okay, so um, let's start with the design setup up here. So if I click on this, I have theme options. In my case, I've, I've used our custom Saperis Purple, but you could use any color you wanted. You can pass in your own custom color as well. You can change the font style. Let's make it decorative. I don't know if this is maybe a wedding or an, an invitation to any type of, um, of party that you're giving. Um, I'm just keeping it on basic. Let me go ahead and do like so. Uh, by the way, let me go back to the customized theme because uh, you can also use an image uploader for your header. So if you click on image uploaded, um, here you will see that you have um, a lot of default images. You could also upload your own if you wanted to. Um, I just chose one from here. They're, they're pretty good, I would say, so do give them, um, do have a look at them. Okay, so um, what I've done here is that I've named my form um, customer survey. Then here I've um, added a little description. And here, so if we click on this here, you see this is a multiple choice question. Here's the question, here's the description. And here I've chosen to add an image. Um, there you go, if I click on it like so, you see the image here. And these are the answers that a person can choose from and multiple choice, meaning that a person can choose something and uh, not multiple things, but only can choose one thing. Um, if I wanted to add more choices, then I could just click here on add other or add options. So if I click on add other, it just says other and a person can type in something. Good, uh, copy, delete, required. Now I would say be careful with that because usually when you're um, you know, sending out a form, you wanna make sure that you get as much information as possible, but you don't wanna annoy the people with making maybe, I don't know, from 20 questions, all of them are required, otherwise they can't complete the survey. So I think um, you know it's best to 
you know, to see what makes sense, what is really required and what is just nice to know. Clicking on the three dots as always means more options or more actions. And here I've decided on showing the description. So let um, me just uh, undo that description. Then you see up here, the description disappeared. So that's something that I can um, um, manipulate from down here and go to section based on answer this is something we will see before and shuffle or afterwards and shuffle option is just if I want these answers to be shuffled okay um, I can let's say if I wanted to switch this the position then I can just go ahead and let me do like so I could just drag this to the top or drag this down back to below it. So um, even when you started out creating your form, your different questions and you want to change the order of the questions and you can just go ahead and drag and drop it. So here we have check boxes and in this form I'm, I'm using all of the different question options um, available in Google Forms. So here we have check boxes. Um, I've chosen, if you click on the three dots, you can say response validation on the checkboxes. And I've chosen that um, at least one has to be selected. So I've made this required and a person has to select at least one. They can't select more, but it has to be at least one. And this will be the message that is displayed in case that this condition is not met. So if a person tries um, not to select anything, they will see this message. And here there's a drop down, and there are different conditions you can choose from. So you could say select at most two, maybe, and only tell them, you know, you can only choose two. Then what we have here is just a simple um, text. So this I got from here, a title and description. Um, and I'm just advising the people that the next question down here will decide on what they will see next. So this text you could use for anything to give them further information or whatever you need to. And also here you can decide on the showing the description or not. Then here we have the drop down. So um, have you ever visited? And then it's either yes or no. You know what? As a matter of fact, let me just click a new preview so that we get to see this. So this is the drop down that we have before. So yes or no. And depending on the question, they will see one thing or the other. How do I decide on, let's say someone says, yes, I've visited this website. I want to bring them to a specific section. Well, first up here, go to section based on answer. So you click on the three dots, then you activate this, and then you get to choose to which section you want to, you want to send them to. So I have a drop down here. I could just send them to the next section, but in my case, I've sent, I'm sending them to the Saparis IO visitors. And if they answer no, that they have not visited our website yet, then I'm going to send them to the non saparis.io visitors. So I think this is a very powerful mechanism mechanism to depending on the answers that your the people who are filling out this form are giving you send them to different sections and and app follow-up questions that match the answers they've given in the previous section so I want to show you here section two of four this is the non saparis visitors section and section three is the saparis.io visitors. So depending on the answer that they give me here, I'm either sending them to one section or the other. And afterwards, I'm sending both. So this is the non, just to make this very clear, this is the non saparis.io visitors. I'm afterwards sending them to the section four, to the YouTube channel. And I'm actually doing the same for the saparis.io visitors. I'm also sending them to the go to section four YouTube channel. So um, um, because they've answered with two different values or the two different answers, I'm sending them kind of like on separate routes to get more information on those situations. And then I'm bringing them back together to actually end this specific survey or this form. So that's a possibility on how you could do this. Let's just go back to see what we have here. So here's our, um, the, the section name. And then here we have a long answer text that a person can fill out. I have not made this required. 
Um, and you know, this here, this always means you can add an image if you want to. It's just the way, if I go back up here, this is the image I've added here, the logo. So, you know, you're very free in the way you want to, to, um, to style this. Then if we go down to the next question, this is the linear scale. Um, you have options from zero up until 10. So I've left it uh, on the default values of one and five. And I've said uh, the lowest is one and the highest on the scale is five. Again, you could make this required or not. Click on the three dots. Um, this is, you know, something crucial in all of the Google tools because it always means that you will find more options. So here, look what you're missing out on. This is just simply some text and I've added this image um, or no, excuse me, I'm mistaking. This is actually the image here that I have added. Let me just go ahead and uh, Search for the Google logo just to show you how this looks. Insert. It's inserting down here. So that's the type of, it's not really a question, it's just a type of content. You could add a hover over text. I'm going to delete that because that was just to showcase what I used here. But if I click on this here, you'll see uh, this is the hover over text that I've added um, that will be displayed when a person hovers over this image. Good, if I go down to section number three, again, this is the name or the, the title of the section. And here I've chosen the short answer, what's the best thing about Saparis. Then um, down here, we have the multiple choice grid. So I have rows and I have columns. Um, so let me see, this is that I have visited. So let's just um, move on to this here so that you can see this. Yes, I have. There you go. So here we have our rows, which sections of Saperis have you visited? Uh, yes, and you'll notice I can only choose one column or one answer per row. So you have my rows my columns and I marked or activated require a response in each row so you can't skip a row and try to submit the form that won't work here you see the alert this question requires one response per row and it will also um, you know it's it's uh, it's mandatory that you can only choose one answer Per row so it expects one and the maximum is also one so again here if I click on this uh, I could say limit to one response per column if I wanted to shuffle row order again so that's that and then down here last the last uh, type of question we have here is to tick box grid so again we have our rows we have our columns let's have a look at how this looks aha okay so this is a bit different because here i can say uh yeah google apps grid read it liked it uh like so so here i can have on one row i can have multiple columns or multiple tick boxes that i tick off so there you go here you could also say require response in each row if you wanted to i did not do so but you could and limit one response per column if you wanted to Let's scroll a little bit further. This is just the section header again. Then here we have video. So you see over here, let me just click on add video. Uh, and then you could add any video from YouTube um, or from any specific URL that you have. And it would look like so. And last up is just a short answer text. So let's have a look at how this looks. Let's click on next. There you go one uh, this is the video if you click on it by the way You're you just see a little what is yeah beautiful you just see your uh, a little um window with the youtube video and then some last words um random words and let's submit that as well good so that's um or those were all the the elements you have at your disposition when you are creating um, and 
a Google form, let's say a survey, you could create a quiz. Um, there's a lot you could do, but this, this is more now, you know, focusing on how could you like have a customer survey um, or a survey for your students, how they thought um, that the semester was whatever. So that's how you create the form, how it looks. But what about the responses? How do the responses look? So I'm going to show you now how the responses look and then I'm also going to show you how you can actually send out this form because in my case um, I just filled out kind of like the preview version but you probably want to send this form out or make it available somehow to the people whose um, responses you want. So I simply clicked on the responses tab up here and it really visually shows me that two people have responded. I'm actively currently accepting responses and I think this is a pretty cool way to visualize the answers. This is the default that Google Form offers us. This is awesome. Um, this is mainly what I use when, when I send out forms um, or surveys to my customers. But, you know, depending on the amount of, of answers you get, um, there might be a lot of data and you might want to process this data a bit differently. And check out here, you can click on the Google spreadsheet and it's going to say now create a new spreadsheet. That's perfect. Let's go ahead and do so. It's taking all these answers now and it's laying it out in a spreadsheet because this might be useful for you to process a large amount of data um, and also compare maybe different surveys through different months or different years. So here we have the timestamp and per row we have the answers of these people. So I would say that's pretty good. Um, how do we send out this form now? Let's cre we've created this form, now we want to send it out. Let me go back to the form and up here there's this nice send button. Why don't I just click on it? So I'm giving a couple of different options on how I can actually send out this form. Let's say I wanted to send out an email, then I could you know just type in the email addresses of the people here. This would be the subject, this would be the message. Um, and I could also include the form in the email per se, so it would be the message itself, or I could send it like so default and then just simply uh, have the people click on the link and then they will be brought to the form. I can collect the email addresses of the people I'm sending this form to. Um, here, data privacy, you might have to take that into consideration um, that you, you know, explicitly let them know that you will be collecting their email addresses if they fill out the form. Um, I could add collaborators to this form. Let's say if I wanted my colleagues to help me or to edit this form before we sent it out. Uh, this is what I mainly use actually. I usually send out a link or I'll have like a, a message or maybe at, a, at the end of a training resource I'll have a link like please fill out the survey. The people click on it and then they're directly brought to this um, to this form. You can also shorten the URL. Um, this is done automatically. You could also embed it. So this is HTML code is going to generate or create an iframe which you could for instance have on on your website or in your intranet for your colleagues. You can also change the width and the height of, of the way this form is displayed. And you could uh, paste it or post it on Facebook or send it out as a tweet. So um, it really depends on how you yourself want to be using this um, form. By the way, um, let me know what you plan on using forms for. So I usually use it to get feedback on the face-to-face -face or also on the virtual training sessions that I give for Google Workspace. So I'm wondering what will you be using Google Forms for? So depending on your use case, you have a, a quite a lot of options that you can choose from how you want to make this Google Form accessible to the people who use who Whose responses you want to get. Let me know in the comment section below what do you plan on using Google Forms for? Would you mind subscribing to my YouTube channel by hitting the subscribe button below? Because every week I publish new video tutorials about the different apps that are part of Google Workspace and I really want you to benefit from the knowledge I share in those videos.